Resurrection Memorial Cemetery has been Blessed Stanley Rother's resting place since 2017. When he was beatified then, he was moved here from his hometown cemetery in Okarche, Oklahoma, and interred in this chapel in a private ceremony. The last time Blessed Stanley Rother's casket was seen by the public was at his burial in 1981. He had just been martyred. He served here in Oklahoma for several years, uh, various parishes throughout the state. And ultimately, he felt a call to go serve at the parish mission in Santiago, Atitlan, Guatemala. It was down there that he really flourished. He thrived. He really uh, fell in love with the people there and really discovered a heart for serving those people. And um, long story short, after several years down there, he was ultimately uh, murdered on July 28, 1981. Some of the ways he was kind of uh, helping to develop their lives, the, uh, the government kind of saw it as a threat. Uh, even though he wasn't really a political person, he was kind of just there to um, bring Christ to the people that were down there who for centuries had lived down there without a regular parish priest. It's the Sunday before a shrine that bears his name opens in Oklahoma City, and the casket containing his mortal remains is being brought out of the tomb. Archbishop Paul Coakley, who has been instrumental in promoting Rother's cause for canonization, has been waiting for this day for a long time. Uh, we celebrated the beatification of Blessed Stanley in 2017, and it was at that time uh, that we began planning for a shrine for uh, him to, where he would be permanently uh, and finally uh, laid to rest, uh, a place of pilgrimage, a place where people could come to venerate him and uh, to seek his intercession. So it's been a long, long journey, uh, many, many years in the making. He just grew up 15 miles up the road here, and uh, so it's a, it's a very poignant time. Um, the people of Oklahoma have been very interested in the cause and um, in the construction of the shrine, and so it's going to be a, a big celebration uh, for all of us. 88-year-old Archbishop Emeritus Eusebius Beltran is also here. He knew Father Stanley Rother in life and promoted his heroic sanctity in death, making the push for his sainthood to one day be recognized by the church. I found him to be a very humble and devout man. I'm very pleased about this particular moment, but I'm looking forward to the actual canonization, hopefully to come soon. It'll take a verified miracle for that to happen, but the archbishops and many others are praying for it. En route to being interred in a chapel at his new shrine, Blessed Stanley's remains are brought to Oklahoma City's Cathedral of Our Lady of Perpetual Help for an all-night prayer vigil. The casket is wheeled into place, led by the men who have been moving his cause for canonization forward since 2007. The first family allowed in to pray is his own, the Rothers. It's an intimate moment. shared by his sister, nieces, nephews, and cousins. It's a reunion, a chance to reminisce about Uncle Stan. We've learned a lot since his death and since we've grown up. And it's just, it's amazing looking back at, at, at the stories of people have told and, and it's just, it's amazing. He held on to those values when his life was put in danger is what really sticks out to me. What he stood for, I mean, that's a lot right there. Hundreds who never knew him in life but have become closely acquainted with his fame of holiness turn out in his honor. Just thankful to, to be here and good things are to come through the shrine. Blessed only his testament of faith and his martyrdom was very inspiring to me and very crucial in my conversion. I'm just kind of excited for the whole thing. I'm, I'm hoping for the miracle that, and that will get him can, canonized. In the wee hours of the next morning at the massive new Shrine Church complex, Blessed Stanley's mortal remains are put in their final resting place. In a beautiful little chapel that remembers Rother and other martyrs for the faith is his new tomb, the altar itself. It's a fitting tribute to the first American-born martyr in Blessed. This is where the faithful will be venerating him from here forward, the Blessed Stanley Rother Shrine. Formerly a golf course, this sprawling 60-acre campus has a beautiful neo-colonial church, Stanley Rother Museum, and recreation of Mexico City's Tepeyac Hill, where Our Lady of Guadalupe appeared to St. Juan Diego. The Archdiocese of Oklahoma City hopes that people will come from far and wide to receive the sacraments and to learn more about this heroic, martyred priest from Ocarchi, Oklahoma. 
The shrine will be a point of encounter for Spanish and English speakers alike, with daily masses in each language, and a capacity for 2,000 people. Archdiocesan officials like Deacon Norm Maestrick are hoping Blessed Stanley's example will give a new impulse to the evangelization of all people in the U.S. Midwest. If I could speak with Blessed Stanley Rother, he would probably say, this is a lot of fuss for me. But he would probably also say, what an opportunity to lead people closer to God, which is what he did with his life. And so this is kind of an extension of his mission. He's not a recognized saint yet, but he sure is leading the masses to the house of God, the greatest mausoleum, shrine, and parish church in the state. In Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, Alan Holdren, EWTN News In Depth.